All right, my name is Kent. I've been a member of this club for, I think, five or six years. Uh, it's been a great time. I uh, learned a lot of things, and uh, I was volunteered to do this a uh, <laughs> couple, couple months ago to do it on color. Uh, more or less, this is going to be a, a, a beginner demo on color. I'm not the expert here. I just dabble in. Uh, Scott Fless started this a, a while ago, and uh, Ron Campbell has really taken it uh, as, as far as you can go and even further. So if this interests you at all, I mean, this is a great place to start, but if you really want to talk to an expert at going even further with different techniques and uh, coloring, uh, visit Ron's Facebook page or talk to him. He's in Arizona. So I'm going to start with why color. Uh, there's different ways that you can color bowls. Uh, you can paint, you can stain, and then you can use dyes. The difference is, is with, with paint, the molecules are so big, once you apply it, you can't really see anything through it. Uh, with stain, your molecules are a little bit smaller, so like, as, as you know with woodworking, you put stain on, you keep putting stain on, you're eventually going to lose any and all grain that you can see through. Um, it more or less sits on top of, of the wood and adds a color to it. Well, you also know that there's very limited amount of stains that you can use, uh, various colors. You can't really go into like reds, purples, oranges, so on and so forth. Uh, with dyes, your molecules are so small that the light is virtually, uh, you can shine right through the dyes, much la like uh, your colors on your, your clothing. I mean, it, it adds a tint to it, but you can still see the grain of the wood or your clothes or uh, whatever you're applying it to, which makes it very, very neat uh, because it doesn't impede any of the grain that comes through. Uh, an example is, I uh, use this piece of figured maple, and it started out with um, the first couple of coats of tint, and then I just kept on adding two coats, two coats, two coats, two coats, and all it did was accentuate the grain inside the wood. It didn't impede it at all. Uh, which is why I like using it so much because you don't lose uh, the beauty of the wood. Um, on what woods can you use it on? Virtually any woods that you want to, I guess, accentuate the grain of it. If you have a boring piece of maple, uh, add a couple of colors to it. People love colors. Uh, that's why I'm so limited in the, in the amount of samples I have. I've, I've taken uh, my stuff to the uh, art, uh, art festival, virtually all of them have sold. Uh, people, it's, it's different, it's new, it's exciting, and people like to show off, you know, it's not a stained piece of wood anymore or just, a, you know, a boring piece of wood. Uh, you can take a simple piece of maple, add a couple of colors to it, and it's a brand new piece. And people, they, they get really excited about it. Uh, you can use it for accenting, you can use it for coloring, uh, or enhancing the grain again. You can use it for furniture. I've done a, gu uh, a guitar with it already. Um, if you're familiar with guitars at all, the Fender Squires or uh, any of the, the Fenders that you see a sunburst uh, paint job to it, they actually use a trans tint dye uh, to achieve that, uh, that look to it. Um, to start out with, with dyeing, as I use uh, a shellac base, there's different ways that you can use tints. What I like is to, to use the shellac, use the 100% wax free. I made the mistake of using the regular shellac, took it to a show, it sat out in the sun for eh, 20 minutes, and the entire finish bubbled off. <laughs> it was awful. And so you can, the only place I found this at was at Woodcraft. So get the 100% wax-free shellac, then you won't have an issue with anything finishing like over top of it or any sun bad stuff. <laughs> and uh, what I usually like to do is start out with a couple of coats after you're finished sanded to maybe a, a 220 or even a 320, um, whatever you feel is a good uh, finished coat, finished sand. Uh, start out with a couple of coats of just raw shellac over it. What that's going to do is it's going to seal the wood you're putting it in. It's kind of like a, a, a sanding sealer, okay? P put a couple of coats on that and then just give it a nice little scratch coat again with uh, maybe a 220 just to get all your imperfections in your shellac off. This is very important because when you add 
more and more layers of your color, if you go back and sand, it could sand through any rough spots that you have in there, revealing your original wood color that you had before. Um, so if you were gonna uh, add, let's say a blue, and you had a drip, and for your finish sand, your finish buff, if you sand off that drip that you have applied your color to, you sand through that drip, exposing your previous colors or your actual raw wood after you're done. Which, unfortunately with color, it's an all or nothing uh, deal. You have to apply light coats. You can't lay it on thick, otherwise you're gonna get a drip, you're gonna get splotching, um, and then you'll have to start all over, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, which is, again, why I just uh, apply real nice thin coats um, for a nice uniform finish after you're done. Which brings up why, uh, again, I like to use shellac and to start out with a couple of coats of shellac because if you do make a mistake, you can always go back with denatured alcohol. What I use is uh, a spray bottle from Home Depot. I fill, up, fill it up with uh, the denatured alcohol because um, if you want to fix anything or take off your previous layers of color, if you did screw up, you can just apply heavy amounts of the denatured alcohol and it'll come right off. It'll thin your shellac so much that you, it'll take it right down to your base coat, not ruining your piece. So you have you know, a way to go back in time and then start over. Yes, yes, yes. So like on a piece of curly maple uh, or figured maple that it, you see here, I put a couple of coats of shellac, didn't let it dry more than a half hour. It's still soaked into those softer pores and darkened a little bit. So if you want a nice continuous, uh, well, not continuous, uh, an even coat over the top of it, put a couple coats of shellac on there first and it'll seal, it'll be a nice, nice finish afterwards. Your dyes, because the molecules are so thin, they soak into the wood instead of sitting on top of it like a stain would. Um, so yeah, I, I've had it on a thin piece also where even with the shellac, I, I thin turned it and it went, it transferred from the outside all the way to the inside. So it, I guess it's better to use it on a thicker piece, you know, more than an eighth of an inch so you won't have any of that end grain uh, seepage which the shellac, the, the base layer of shellac, also prevents it from soaking in any further. Um, another technique to use with it is to just cut it directly with alcohol, and you can either spray it or wipe it on at that point. It'll give you an entirely different finish on it. It will not be a smooth finish. Um, any of you woodworkers have ever tried to stain maple or soft maple know the difficulties of getting a nice continuous, you know, like oak, you can stain it and it's a nice even stain because the oak is so dense. Whereas maple, soft maple, it'll soak into the pores, the softer pores, and you'll get a very uneven finish, um, which isn't that great, you know, for if you, you want a nice even finish when you're all done with it. Uh, whereas the alcohol uh, will give it a very blotchy, antique used look. Um, which on some pieces looks great, it really does. Uh, Ron does the dab uh, technique on some of his burl pieces and because it's so dense, uh, it doesn't soak in as much, but it gives it a really neat effect. And you can see some of his things on the, uh, the, uh, the club's Facebook page as well. Um, and then you also don't even have to cut it at all, you can just uh, take the dye straight out of the out of the tube and put it right on a, a rag and dab it on right there, full strength. But let me warn you, this stuff is potent at just a, uh, <laughs> and expensive. You're talking 20 bucks uh, a tube there. <laughs> really hard to get off hands. <laughs> That's a very good point, very good point. What me and uh, my friend Scott has done um, is 
I would buy a bottle of a color that we wanted to share, and then we would split it. You know, so that's, now you're only out $10. And I'm telling you, I've had these for three or four years. It, it goes the distance. And as far as storage goes, you can get the expensive storage containers at Woodcraft for three, four dollars a pop, or have a kid, <laughs> or get someone. <laughs> that's cheaper, right? That's, that's cheaper. I'm not having any. Right, right. <laughs> I love using these baby jars. Uh, they're glass, they're airtight, and they're 50 cents a pop, and uh, just get a flavor you like. <laughs> Ugh. So that's a great way to uh, use it. And um, supposedly shellac is good for six months up to a year. Uh, the sample that I use over there, I've had in my garage for over a year and it still sprayed out really nice. I don't know if it was due to the baby jar being airtight, but it was still uh, good after a year. Um, the, the amount of transient dye I use for each application is I fill a jar up with the shellac with this. And it depends on the intensity that you want to have on your piece. I typically put 10 to 16 drops into each jar of this. And I'm telling you, this, this jar right here will do a lot of bowls, a ton of bowls. Um, and I found that the 10 to 16 drop ratio, that, that, was, that was right in the, right the mid-range, it gave me uh, a it allowed me to do a lot of coats. So you fill that jar with your denatured alcohol? Mm, shellac. Shellac. Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. I don't use alcohol at all. I, I like shellac as, for one, a bonder. Um, it finishes out great. It dries super quickly. You put your color in the shellac. Yes. Okay. And then I put that into uh, my spray can, or uh, you can put it in pretty much any kind of spray apparatus. I just picked up this um, at Home Depot here. It's a portable spray can. And you put whatever you want in here. There's no thinning required for the shellac. And you've got a portable aerosol can right here. And you just put it right back in there. They sell the refills for a few dollars. I think it's $8 to get the whole system. Uh, and it comes with a resealable cap. So if you just want to buy a bunch of these, these deals, you seal it, put it away. When you want to use it, you just... So would that stay pressurized? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. This, this, this whole can here is separate from this. Okay. It's all pre-pressurized. You just rack it up and go. And it, it gives you a really nice finish. Is there a brand name on it? Pardon? Is there a brand name on it? Just a preval. That's all. Also available at Woodcraft. So you get 10% if you're military and you don't There you go. You gotta have an idea. How much aerosol capabilities you have there? Did you fill that jar up completely? Would it spray the whole thing through before you leave product? The only thing I've sprayed with this is that sample piece. Um, it says it's good for 100, uh, 100 feet of spraying capability. So. I, would, I can imagine you get a, at least a couple of bowls worth of spring out of just one of those refills. Can I ask a clarification question? Sure. Were you putting the uh, shellac on, on dyed first and then putting the dye? Yes. The yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Completely undyed uh, first is a base coat uh, that seals everything in, and then, then you apply your color. Uh, again, using shellac, it dries. After, if, if it's very thin coats of shellac color that you're putting on, it dries within five to 10 minutes and you're able to put another coat on directly on top of it right afterwards. And the more coats you put on, the more in depth your color is going to be, which is uh, again, nice with shellac because it melds into the previous layer of shellac. So it kind of like lacquer, it melds into each other and uh, it's not kind of layering on top of each other, top of each other, top of each other. You're just getting a thicker coat of shellac. Um, yeah, any other questions about, <laughs> yeah, let's go with Dick first. Yeah, uh, what's the difference between uh, the wax-free shellac and regular shellac? Well, regular shellac is gonna have your wax. That's the, I, I believe, the nature of shellac. It, it, no? <coughs> 
Okay, okay. Um, I've heard that wax will, like if you're trying to do a lacquer finish or a polyurethane finish on top of it, it might have a reaction to the wax uh, in the shellac, so you might get a, a fish eyeing effect or something that you wouldn't want on top of it. So it's, it's more or less safe, it's, it's more safe just to get a de-waxed shellac, because who wants to set their bowl in front of, let's say, a windowsill and have a reaction to the heat of the sun and have your, your bowl pop? You know, it's, you don't want your finish ruined from that. So it's, it's just safer to just go with the de-wax shellac, eliminate any variables, and then just, you know, have a nice looking bowl for years to come. I, I believe you were next. Okay. The difference between a regular spray bottle and that is, would there be more dripping with a regular spray bottle? I w with spray bottles, I, I see it as just squirting big drops. And so I don't think you would get a really nice finish off it. Uh, I would go with some kind of aerosol. Or an airless. Or, or an airless. Yep, spray gun. I started out with an airbrush. That worked out well for small projects. Uh, if you're doing a bigger uh, project, like a bowl, um, I would go get a, a bigger airbrush from, let's say, Harbor Freight. You can pick one up for $10 to $15. I would, or a, a small cup sprayer, you can also get from Harbor Freight for $15. That's just a gravity-fed, it's a can on top of a, a bigger uh, gun, air gun. And that has really, really worked well for me. Um, that's pretty much what I use. It's a little purple air gun that you just hook up a little, uh, it, it hook up your normal compressor to it, maybe put a, a water filter on it so you don't get any water droplets in your air line. And uh, it has already an, uh, an air, f air pressure adjuster on the bottom, so maybe to 15 to 20 PSI is a great pressure to have that come out at a great uh, great finish. You go any less, it'll just start spurting, and so then you get like thicker drops almost. You don't get a nice uh, air to die ratio, and too much, you won't get a lot of product out. You'll just get a lot of maybe back spray uh, off it. Let's... How do you mask oh. the different colors? Um, well, with, with this, um, I just used a pinstriping tape I bought at an automotive shop and then just uh, started with the base color uh, of blue. You can see the maple that came right through. So then I just used, let's see, what did I do? This was six months ago or so. Okay, so I, I shellacked the whole thing, uh, pin taped where I wanted to go and then shot it with blue and then covered the entire project with painter's tape. Uh, and then uh, pinstriped it and then cut out with a, a razor knife uh, and then peeled back my painter's tape. Uh, the only thing you're going to get with, though, if you start mixing colors like I did here, uh, neat part about it is when the red goes on the blue, you get your purple tint, which is pretty neat. And then uh, your red, obviously, on the maple, you'll get your you know, red again. But because the nature of shellac, it doesn't meld in completely so you will feel a roughness to where your colors overlap your other colors. Now, with this piece here, I didn't tape off at all. I started out with uh, the, uh, this part being red, you know, just started from the inside, very light coats because in the middle, because it's uh, turning at a slower speed, uh, you'll get a lot more color towards the inside. So you start out very far away from the piece, in the middle, and then you kind of gradually come out, adding in your layers accordingly. Oh yes, yeah. Most of my pieces, I I am turning while I'm spraying it. Uh, just you get a nice uniform color all the way around it. Um, and then as far as the blue, I just started in from the outside and worked my way in and stopped at about this point here. And so you're not encroaching on this, but no, there's no taping off. There's just a uh, just working with your airbrush. You were next, sorry. You sand between each coat? No, no. Uh, again, if you do have any dripping or any fears of dripping, or if there's any dust in there, you don't want to sand through the layer before. 
it'll, it'll ruin your finish. You don't know what's behind it. I don't, I don't take any chances with it. I just, all or nothing, like I said. And then when you're done with it, just do a light coat with a, you know, like a sanding pad and then apply your finish. Go ahead. I usually go between one and 200 RPMs. Just to, you know, feel it out. This is definitely uh, something you're gonna wanna feel out. Um, experiment, whatever works for you is what's gonna work for you. A um, lot of trial and error, but which is also nice putting, uh, starting out with your shellac coat to begin with because you can start over. You can erase that, soaking it with denatured alcohol, probably a couple times, depends on how many coats you put on. You can wipe it all off again and start again. But it's, I mean, it's a, it's a great way to accent, you know, a boring piece or make a really cool piece even better. I mean, even with, with this piece here, I just wanted to make the, the inner part darker. So I used an antique, I think it's mahogany, uh, trans tint dye, and then just hit it. This was a whiter, whiter color bowl. And I just wanted the inside to pop a little bit. I also used it on a tabletop that I made uh, down in my, my basement. It was uh, a piece of sapelli that I got from one of our friends here, uh, veneer. I wanted it a little bit darker because it was a yellow table. I wanted it to look more like walnut, so I just covered the top of the tabletop with that trans tint dye, and with the curly sapelli, it really made the grain pop. You can, the possibilities are endless with your trans tint dyes. There's so many uses for it, and it's so user friendly. Well, yes. Yeah, just clean up, you know, if there's any dust particles or... Yes. Yeah. Um, not steel wool, I, because the shellac is, it's very waxy, it's, it's not a very hard finish. I, I, I would be afraid that the steel wool would embed some of those fibers in there. So definitely an aluminum oxide sandpaper. Um, and if you're, you know, definitely let it set overnight to fully cure before you uh, apply any sandpaper to it. I love lacquer, just, 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 yeah, yep, a clear lacquer. Uh, you can use a gloss, semi-gloss, satin, whatever, but your shellac will automatically come out as a gloss. Uh, depends on how many layers you put on it, but it will always come out as a gloss. So if you put a satin to it, it that will take over the sheen uh, for it. Just a little, just to take off any. I don't put shellac again. I go right to a lacquer. For, for your finish, yeah, for your top coat. No, because you used your de-waxed shellac. Oh, okay. No, that's a very hard finish. Go ahead. Uh, I bought a little jar of powdered trans tin. Okay. What, what different considerations did you use with using that? How do you cut your powdered, or if you haven't even played with it yet? Is it kind of the same thing? You just it's going to be more difficult to use because you have to mix the powder with water to get your color. Um, so and then that might not suspend the shellac as well. You might be able to mix it directly with a little bit of that, but it's not as designed for that. It's the liquids that are designed to mix it just about everything. Could you also use uh, alcohol? To, uh, I believe the powders are water soluble. Yeah. I don't know if they'll mix in alcohol or not. Yeah. I wish they would because they're a lot cheaper than the liquids. <laughs> that kind of moves on to, um, I guess one of the hardest finishes I've heard here is to using a graphite finish. It's super hard. Uh, Matt Hutchins, Hutchinson can attest to that. He battled uh, graphite finishes for, for one of your vases, I believe you had. It, it was like a flat, wide rim bowl, like a broad platter, that, but it had a bunch of little beads in it, or about 28 inch wide beads across it. That's right, that's right. And so I wanted to try a graphite finish just for the heck of it. <coughs> and uh, I consulted with Scott. He really didn't know how to go with it, go about it. So I used the same. I guess technique as I did with my trans tint dyes is I, I got some powdered, very fine powdered graphite, cut it with alcohol first just to get it soluble, and then put it in shellac. 
I, I mixed that with shellac to thin the shellac a little bit and then applied it in the same fashion I did with the trans tint dyes. And what that did is that, because I tried using, you know, rubbing pencil on it first, I tried crushing pencil lead up with a mortar and pistol. That didn't work. It was always rubbing off. I couldn't get a consistent uh, finish to it. And then, well, how do you put a finish on something that's so doggone slippery? And just couldn't get anything to stick to it. So cutting it with alcohol allowed it, it thinned it out so much and then putting it with a bonder like shellac applied super smooth, got me a really consistent finish. And uh, I applied that first to this bowl and then pinstriped it on top of it and then put an enamel, black enamel on top of it. So what you see in these little pinstripes is a graphite finish. And uh, that's a secret that nobody else knows until now. <laughs> Scott didn't want me to tell any of you guys. <laughs> keeping it close to the heart. So it just kind of ties in with the whole system that I've used with these, with these trans tint dyes that now you guys can try, you know, give it a whirl. That's it's just kind of a fun little process. So with that. Now, you told me a little bit about that thin bowl. Yes. Maybe you could explain that again, the thin red one. Okay. And how you did that with the microwave. <laughs> this was one of my thin bowls. That I've used it was just a, a figured maple and uh, turned it thin, turned it very green. It was spraying me as I was carving it. And <laughs> it was so green it started chattering on me. That's where those little marks came from. Accents, I like to call them. <laughs> so I, I thought I'd play with it. So I sprayed, with it, sprayed it first with the purple uh, transtent dyes and then re-sanded it so that the, only the purple remained and then dyed it red. This was probably 10 coats of red that I put on this, so it was very, I was just experimenting. Some dumb little bowl that I had sitting there. But what I had done is put a first couple of coats of regular shellac on it just to seal it, wrapped it in paper towel, and put it in the microwave on defrost for 15 to 20 seconds at a time. And what it does is it warps it so fast, the, it, the shellac seals it from cracking, okay, because that's one of the downsides of green turning, is you leave it in the air for, even overnight, you'll get it, it'll crack, especially with the fruit woods. So if you wrap it in paper towel, after you sealed it with shellac, that will keep the moisture in, but the defrost will evaporate it into the paper towel, leaving a very warped, bowl after you're done with it. So I actually put it in this in the microwave three different times for 15 to 20 seconds, rewrapped it every time with more paper towel because the paper towel you get out of the microwave, it's soaked. It is soaking wet with water. So you need to discard that, start it with a new one to absorb more, more of the moisture. And then you just keep going until it stops warping. So that's how I accelerated the drying process out of a green bowl with no cracking. I didn't. I just sprayed it by hand. You don't have to ap uh, apply your trans tint dye on a lathe, but I just found that if I'm <coughs> melding colors, it's a better way because it's more consistent. You know, you're holding it. It's like trying to turn a piece without a lathe. You're, it's not going to be perfectly round. <laughs> you're going to have a lot of sanding after you're done. Um, uh, it's, it's, it just gives you more of a consistent feel, a uh, consistent end product if you turn it while you're spraying it on the lathe. I've got a multicolored lathe right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't rust. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's a really well sealed. Uh, unit right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, are there any other questions? Rush braider is not a bad idea. Is shellac all natural? Shellac is all natural, and so is the alcohol. But you will get a hangover if you breathe a lot of it. Hmm. Well, if you're drinking while you're turning, <laughs> you're fine. It's like the hangover. It's not the fun part. <laughs> 
I haven't found it that stinky. Mm -mm. No. Maybe it's the acetone that you're using. But uh, any other questions at all? All right, there you go. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.